Well, good morning. Uh, plantar fasciitis, what a tough subject. Um, what I'm going to talk about is mostly plantar fasciitis as it relates to hiking, but it would apply to going to the office or going around town. So I'll try to present this as concisely as I can, but this is not dynamic material. It's much more fun to show you pictures of waterfalls and cliffs and mountaintops and our hikes, but uh, bear with me. Um, plantar fasciitis is a tough nut to crack. Boy, once, once you head down that road, it's pretty tough. Um, I think the best way for me to show what I think about it, it's just my opinion, um, is through various links to different podiatrists and various links to things I use. Um, so, first off, I'm not a foot doctor, I'm not an expert, I'm just some guy who's played around with plantar fasciitis for a long time and uh, knows a thing or two about it. If you have any questions, I would just ask your local doc. So the first question is, what is plantar fasciitis? And you know what? I don't think anybody knows. Uh, if you ask 80% of podiatrists, they'll say you are deficient in orthotics. Now, it is impossible to be deficient in orthotics. Uh, that says for the past 100,000 years, the foot has never been a good design. It's always bad. Uh, in one of the videos I'll link to, uh, the podiatrist makes a statement that it's like 80% of people who wear shoes will have a foot problem during their lifetime. And in societies that don't wear shoes, third world countries, or they wear flip-flops or they go barefoot, only 20% of people have a problem. So I think a lot of it relates to modern day living, and I'll talk about that. And in a little bit. Um, so how is plantar fasciitis treated in most foot doctor's office? And it's usually a corticosteroid injection right into the, into the plantar fascia. That's got to feel good. I've never had that done, thank you. Um, and then it's orthotics. So, and I think orthotics have their place and I'll talk about that in a, in a bit. So if you ask most foot doctors, uh, they would probably grant you that the back here is very tight, the, and the uh, Achilles tendon is very tight. I think it's more than that. I think it's this part of the leg is very tight, this front, this front muscle. The top of the foot is very tight. The extensor muscles here are very tight too, and also the plantar fascia. So in my view, the plantar fascia gets stuck between both of these things being tight, and because someone's got to give, and it's usually right here. Now I have high arches, as uh, you can see, so uh, we'll talk about that later on too. Um, so one treatment is just to get the front, back, top, top, and bottom um, as flexible as possible. And that's easier said than done. Um, the second reason I think that most people have plantar fasciitis is that they've got the wrong shoes. Um, and I'll, I'll give you links here in a second for uh, what I think the right shoes are. Uh, the third reason is people just have weak feet. So you mix tight, tight tendons tight tendons, tight, 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 with weak muscles and bad shoes, you're going to have a foot problem. So um, there are a few uh, foot strengthening things you can do, but probably one of the best ones is to walk barefoot. Now if you ask 80% of podiatrists, um, um, should people walk barefoot, they'll say no, <laughs> never walk barefoot, always with, have your orthotics on. And it's like wearing a cast. When you have orthotics on all the time, um, if you break your arm and you get put in a cast and your cast is on for uh, two months, is your arm stronger or weaker after the two months when you take the cast off? It's tremendously weaker. So then you kind of get into this endless uh, back and forth between plantar fasciitis and orthotics and weakness and then the wrong shoes. So uh, um, one of the things you can do is to just walk barefoot. Now, if you're having active plantar fasciitis, that's kind of hard to do because it's like having an a active wound. So you have to go slow on that part. So I was searching around on the internet, on YouTube, of course, and I found a guy named Dr. Ray McClanahan, and I'll put his link to one of his videos right up here. So he had a new point of view that I liked about plantar fasciitis. Um, and he has a similar video um, that I'll link right here. Now it's probably better if you guys go and watch those videos, because you're not gonna know what I'm talking about if you don't know, if you had didn't listen to his like five minute talks on those things. Um, and lastly, um, if you want to find out more about Dr. Ray McClanahan, he's in Portland, Oregon, 
and a list of all of his videos are right here. There was also a guy I liked called the Sock Doc. I guess he's a chiropractor um, uh, who did a video on plantar fasciitis. He was thinking that plantar fasciitis comes from being really tight right in here. And I can remember when I had it, I did have a lot of really tight points right, right there. He's saying that although you feel it here, it's tight here. Yeah, it, I, I guess that's true, and I did rub that out, and as I'm pushing on this now, it feels fine. But, um, so I've been doing this for, for, for a while, though. So um, his video is right here. One of the points he made, which I always think of, is that don't stretch a knot. That is, if you're having a muscle spasm, if you're having a, a plantar fascia, um, explosion, that's not the time to be stretching the plantar fascia. It's, it's, you can stretch this, you can stretch this, but try not to go too crazy right in, in uh, that part while it's still active. So what's worked for me, uh, trying to strengthen my feet, uh, doing various little, little exercises and walking barefoot, um, and being flexible. Now the first part is, um, we're talking about hiking and backpacking, remember in this video. And um, I got a lot of good results when I switched to Ultra shoes. Um, I wear the Ultra Lone Peak uh, now 3.5, and I'll give a review of that here in a bit. But any of the Ultra shoes are what's called zero drop. That means that your heel and the ball of your foot are the exact same distance off the ground. With most shoes, your heel rides high um, and your foot drops. So, that's the, so that might be as much as an inch drop. Um, the second part of the Ultra shoes is that the toes are um, uh, very, uh, the, the foot box is very toe shaped. And with a lot of other shoes, the foot box is very pointed. I'm thinking of Cascadia's, our uh, uh, very popular brand, but uh, very pointed toe box. If it works for you, that's great, but it doesn't work for me. Um, I have a very kind of a straight toe, um, so some people's big toes can can inward a lot and they get more of a bunion from that, but um, uh, if, if you're foot shape is pretty straight, then uh, you might not do too well with pointed toe boxes. So if you got plantar fasciitis wearing a particular shoe, that may not be the right shoe for you. I suppose it's possible that you can get plantar fasciitis with, with, uh, with a flat shoe too, but generally we're just, you know, talking. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, stretching. So stretching is making all the muscles in your legs longer than they uh, should be, and they're less prone to spasms, and, and the more flexible your entire leg is, the better off you're gonna be. So the first thing that I, I love is just a plain ball. These are trigger point balls. I'll leave a link for this in the description below. I use this thing, I've worn the, the name off of it. I, I use it all the time. This only weighs about less, a little bit less than an ounce. I mean, it can fit into any back, backpack. Anytime people stop for breaks at lunch, should should be getting the ball out. So the, the, the you know, way you do it is you just kind of roll it. Um, so every time I'm at my desk and I'm just surfing the internet, I, I'm getting out here and rolling my foot. I don't know that there's a real right or wrong way. They, they say that there's a big reflex point right here, right under the back of your meta uh, tarsals. So if you put the ball in there, it's kind of rough. But I just just I just go where uh, just wherever it feels like it feels good. Um, if your foot feels tired, you can do it at work. You can do it anywhere. So love the ball. So the ball does stretch the plantar fascia. When when you think about it, I mean, what do all what is something like orthotics and that uh, nighttime uh, splint that you wear? and uh, taping, what does all that have to have in common? I think what it has in common is it keeps the plantar fascia long. What you don't want is a tight, hard plantar, uh, plantar fascia. You want it to stay flexible and long, and that's what that, when you tape it, it's like putting a, uh, if you will, a jock strap or a sports bra on your foot, and that pulls it up, and the tape goes like this. And I'll demonstrate tape later on, but uh, uh, that's a, a great treatment. But, they all have in common that they're keeping this plantar fascia longer. You know, the the uh, uh, nighttime toe splint that, that, that brings it up, it helps you to not have the uh, plantar fascia get short overnight. I've never used one. It looks torturous to sleep with these things on uh, your, your feet. I think that the, uh, 
taping can do the same thing um, and be a lot more comfortable. So the second part of stretching is to actually stretch like you see people at the gym do. Um, so I'll show you uh, my basic stretches for it and they involve um, foam rolling and uh, a little bit harder uh, uh, pipe rolling, if you will. So part of what I'm doing when I just start to stretch is I just start to feel this part back here stretch. You just want to kind of just gently feel like you're you're tugging and pulling on this part. If you ask, most chiropractors will say that this part is hooked to this part, it's hooked to this part, it's hooked to this part, it's hooked to this part, that part, that part. So they'll say it goes up to your neck. I don't know, maybe. Um, but uh, this is definitely a, a basic thing. Now, you can do this in the tent before you get out of out of bed. Just don't just jump up. Uh, just stretch a little, little bit, get this feeling longer. Um, I'll also lay on my back and uh, uh, kind of cross my legs over it, kind of twist my back a little a little bit to get that stretched out. Um, and the next part is I'll uh, take either a foam pad if you're really sore, but if you're more hardcore you can just use a plain old PVC pipe. I took it and, and just sanded it so it's kind of rough um, so it doesn't slip. But a, a foam roller will, will, will work fine. I start up high so I'm, I start up high and I'll twist it, you know, so you're kind of working all the parts and I'll move it down and work the middle calf. Again, the theory is that the calf is hooked to the Achilles and the Achilles is hooked to the heel and the heel is hooked to the plantar fascia and the plantar fascia is what you're working on. So then I'll move a little slower down and if you get kind of a tight point, or a point that's sore, that's one spot where you want to work on. Uh, when I first did, started to do this, oh my god, it was like right in here, <laughs> super painful, which was a good tip that that's probably where I needed to work on. If you get better, you can kind of cross it to put more pressure on that. If you're, if that's not, not enough, you got the old black tube. <laughs> um, and then lastly, I'll go and work right in the, right in that, in, in that Achilles tendon where it inserts into the heel. And then you can do the same thing where you're kind of rolling it. And then as you get better, you can kind of grab your toes. So I divide my stretching into different uh, uh, ways. I start sitting, then next I kneel, which looks like this. Now I have a bad knee, so um, if you can, it's best to just sit on your feet, but I can't do that, so I'll put this in back of there. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to stretch this part out here. And the goal is that in time, your leg sits flat. If you looked at any 10 year old, they can sit on their feet and this is completely flat. So you see, I'm not even that stretched, but I'm an old man, so. But you should be able to just get in there and just stretch that out a little, little bit. So the second part I do is I sit on the back of my feet. So you're trying to, I can do this because I'm not I don't have any current plantar fascia pain, but I'm trying to stretch this part out here by, by the toes flexing. A simple thing I'll do um, when I'm just standing in line is I'll just kind of stretch my foot up. You, kind of, you can kind of see how you kind of pick your foot up off the, off the ground. You're trying to basically do uh, uh, foot push-ups. So you can do 10 or 20 of those in a row, you'll, you'll find you can get pretty good at that. And the first time you try it, it's really hard, but um, just that act of drawing that foot upwards, making this, this muscle stronger. So one stretch that I do, um, we have a stairway. And what I do is I put the front of my feet on the nosing of the stairway and let my feet fall backwards a little bit while I'm holding on to the to this hand handrail. Um, you do that very gently. Now, if there's any pain, you don't do it. But I like to feel, as my foot's dropping, I like to feel the stretching right in here, and it should stretch all the way up, and you should feel some nice stretching in, in uh, here too. Several people have said they've gotten complete relief just off of that. So they do that two or three times a, a day. Again, you're trying to get this to be very flexible and very stretched. Uh, um, so I'll do that stair stretch at least once a day, uh, maybe twice. Um, 
I let it go for about a minute. Again, these aren't 10 second stretches. It's, it's not like when you're in 12th grade and you go out in the gym class and you're like, uh, uh, there, I'm stretched. No, it, you, you gotta let the body sink into it so that um, uh, when you stretch a muscle, the first thing the muscle does is contract a little bit, but as you keep, it, keep the stretching up, the muscle will kind of relax a little bit and stretch further than it did be before. So you want to make sure that you don't get too quick and jerky with these stretches. You, they're real slow. Have some patience. Maybe watch it, uh, watch your show while you're doing all, all, all these stretches. I probably spend about 10 minutes a day, maybe now. So it's not like you got to do it the rest of your life. The worse you're feeling, the more you should be kind of doing the Epsom salts baths and gentle massages and stretching and all those things. Um, and those kind of all add up to health. Health isn't something that you can directly attack. It's something that happens to you when you take care of a bunch of other things that, on the side. Health just kind of happens. So those are some thoughts on Some other ideas you can try are, if all else fails, think about your diet. There are some new theories on that, that um, if people have problems with certain foods that they can be in a very inflamed state. And the big boys on that are what's called nightshades. Nightshades are potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers. Any kind of pepper, not black pepper, but red pepper, green peppers, habaneros, uh, cayenne pepper, all those things are thought to be uh, tough on some people's uh, joints. So how would you tell if you don't eat those foods for six weeks and see how your joints feel? There's really no other way to tell. There is a a uh, thing called the lectin avoidance diet, L-E-C-T-I-N, I'll leave a link uh, for that in the description below. Uh, but that kind of shows you some of the foods that might be. Are they? Who knows? I mean, <laughs> um, you just try stuff out and see if it works for, for you. Some people just have a different way that they metabolize foods, and maybe that's cut, giving you joint pain. I don't know. And the foot and the plantar fascia is just a big joint. Um, so that's one, one uh, thing you can try. Now there are some bold new um, ideas for plantar fascia pain. One of them is shock wave therapy. I actually had that done. Very interesting. Uh, there's a podiatrist in town that does that. It's not a cheap thing. Did it really make my plantar fascia pain go away any faster? I, I don't know. It's possible. I mean, uh, the idea is that uh, you go in and you cause a new injury. Uh, there's a thing called prolotherapy, which is a sugar uh, injection right into the plantar fascia. What does that do? It basically causes a mild injury. When the body sees a mild injury, it will bring blood and fibroblasts and platelets and a bunch of other stuff to it to make it heal. The problem with the plantar fascia is it doesn't have a direct blood flow. It gets its nutrients from the surrounding tissues that have to basically uh, uh, come into the plantar fascia through osmosis. Uh, so that's why it can take a long time to heal. If you cut your arm, it heals in a day or two. But if you cut your plantar fascia, it's going to take some time. Uh, so the idea is with uh, shockwave therapy or prolotherapy is to give you a new injury and the body will, will know what to do with that. Uh, another new therapy is laser therapy, so they'll, they'll hit um, on the bottom of your foot with what's called a K-laser, um, and that can work for some people. Um, uh, what I do is variations of that. So one is called the TEND light, T-E-N-D-L-I-T-E, -E. I'll leave a link for that below too. Um, I use that, or I did use it um, a lot when I had problems. I probably use it two or three times a day. It'll work on uh, pretty much any kind of uh, ache and pain. The other one is a basic infrared bulb. Um, so uh, red light is about 630 nanometers to 650, somewhere in there. The infrared bulbs run between 630 and 1,000. Um, and I'll leave a link for that set up below too. And then the third is um, a near infrared uh, bulb which um, there's a doctor on the internet, Dr. Mercola has talked about that for different aches and pains. And I'll leave a link to what I use for that below too. So this is a 10 light. It's just a 
like a very fancy flashlight. Just puts out a red light, uh, but it's a pretty bright red red light. So I'll pretty much apply this to any uh, thing that's sore. Um, they say to use it one or two minutes. It turns itself off after 60 seconds, so you got to do two rounds of it. But it's not like 20 minutes on the same spot. Um, I I pretty much just put it close to the skin. If you're treating a big spot, it might take time to uh, uh, work on every single spot for, t for two minutes. So this is the Ruby Lux red light. Uh, you commonly see this in your bathroom, so it's not like it's toxic. It's what you use as a heat bulb. They're 250 watts, so it does take a little bit of a heat guard. Uh, so you don't want to just have it uh, uh, to where you could burn yourself with it. I put it probably a foot or two foot away from me, well, 10 minutes or something, until my foot feels warm or whatever, it's, whatever aches feels warm. Um, I like it, and it's cheap. It's maybe the, uh, 20 bucks. Uh, finally, this is a near-infrared bulb. It's got a bunch of different LEDs here. Uh, this is what's used uh, to put by your house to for your burglar alarm. You know, you shine it, and then the, the camera can be right here so that this lights up whatever burglar is by your house. Um, I learned about this from uh, Dr. Mercola, and I'll leave a link to that uh, uh, webpage below. And uh, this is like about... This is like this um, times two. I mean, it's, it's a little bit more powerful. So um, I don't know the length of time you need to shine this on something. Um, it's probably 10 minutes or so is, is, a, is enough. I mean, does any of it a game changer? Not, not really, like I said, it's 20 different things. It's stretching, it's strengthening, it's the right shoe, it's uh, the right diet, it's a few um, AIDS, if that's possible. It's KT tape. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't have any quick uh, bulletproof answers for you. And lastly, there's far infrared. That usually comes in like a sauna or uh, uh, such things like that. Uh, that's around a thousand, I think, to 1,200 nanometers. So there's a there's a whole range of light which is thought to have beneficial properties for uh, uh, it, its ability to make the body speed up healing. I do walk barefoot as much as I can, and if you have active plantar fasciitis, I don't think you want to do that that much. I think it's better to wear orthotics for a while and then gradually uh, wean yourself off. Uh, again, you don't want to have a crutch or a cast on for the rest of your life. You want to eventually have strong, healthy, flexible feet and in my opinion, again, what do I know? But in my opinion, uh, you can't do that if you're always wearing orthotics. Now, I do wear orthotics in my, in my hiking shoes. Uh, I'm carrying 30 extra pounds. I'm walking for 10, 15, 20 miles. And I'm not that young anymore. So I do uh, like that feeling of that support. So I think orthotics do have their place, uh, but it's a very unique small place. I think for most uh, things going to the store, uh, walking around the house, people should be barefoot. Uh, maybe some people can't do that. I don't know. You know, again, if you have any questions, ask your local podiatrist. We talked about orthotics, and I do have orthotics in my house slippers when I first put weight on them. Um, so I do find that that's, that feels good. Uh, once my feet are warmed up, then I'll go barefoot. But I like to have some orthotics in there the first part of the, uh, maybe the first half an hour that I'm walking up, walking around. Um, so I buy my orthotics from a guy in Portland, Oregon called Fit Thotic. I'll leave a link for that below. Um, he sends you a little kit and you stand in it and um, a couple weeks later, uh, he'll send you back the finished orthotic. And I've gotten several pairs from him, and they're always awesome. Um, so I would highly recommend it uh, him. Uh, and it's usually like a two-week turnaround. So this is one of Fitthotics orthotics. Uh, I probably got about 100 miles on these. Uh, they're thin, so it's different than a lot of orthotics that have a real thick 
Now what you notice is it's got a little white spot here. This is called a metatarsal pad. It's a separate thing. I didn't buy it from Fifth Audit. I bought it on Amazon. I'll leave links for that below. So there are two arches to the foot. The arch, the, the main arch is the arch we all think of, but the foot has a metatarsal arch that goes here, and this should be domed. Uh, as people age, that can fall and be flat. So this little pad coincides with that and just starts to bring my foot back up like that again. So it will feel weird the first time you use it like a rock is in your shoe, but your foot quickly molds to that so that you get this arch back. Um, and I, I found that it really adds a lot of comfort to long term, uh, to long hikes. Um, so how do you place this? Um, I use tape first to kind of get it on. It's a pain, you know, you got to put the shoe in and put the shoe back on and walk with it a few feet. No, that feels weird. Move it to the left a little bit and then move it over a little bit. So it generally goes just right. There's a bunch of bones you can feel right there. It goes just in back of that so that this front, the bones of your foot ride right here. And this just goes right in back of it. So I, I think Dr. Ray has a video on that too. You can look that up. Uh, but I would highly recommend a metatarsal arch. Uh, okay. A nice thing to try is a basic Epsom salts bath. Uh, you can put a couple cups of Epsom salts in a bathtub or a cup of Epsom salts in a foot soaking tub. Uh, warm water, soak your feet in there a good half an hour or longer. Uh, that can be done every day. Um, I've gotten some good relief from that. Maybe it's the heat, maybe it's the, the Epsom salt. I, um, Epsom salts is magnesium sulfate, and magnesium sulfate tends to make uh, spasms relax well. So uh, that might be something that folks can try. So something that, that does work for me is uh, KT tape. I don't use it all the time, but if it's feeling a little bit achy, um, that's a great thing to carry in your backpack. I've seen a couple uh, backpack videos where, where folks have used that. Uh, again, the idea on that is you're trying to, to it's basically a bandage orthotic, and that it's going to pull that plantar fascia upward and give that some support. And uh, it's, again, like a jock strap for your plantar, plantar fascia, and that's going to give that some, some support and take the load off of that a little, little bit. Also, it's going to tend to keep that plantar fascia stretched and not let it become tighter. Um, and that seems to work pretty, pretty good. Um, I always have some in my backpack. I've not had to use it for some reason. <laughs> uh, when I'm backpacking, it's like when my feet feel the best. Where they start to get achy is when I don't walk. It's really weird. I don't know what that's about. Uh, but the more I walk, just usually the better my legs feel. But I must be a freak in that. So this is K, KT tape, it's got a little KT on it. Uh, KT tape comes in two different kinds, either the pre-cut, where you can see that it's got a pre-cut uh, uh, edge, or just a long strip. The benefits of the pre-cut is you just tear it off and you're done, but then you're stuck with about 10 inches. KT tape is fantastic. Uh, if you have blisters, uh, it'll go great on, on your foot. Um, I've had it stay on my feet for a week. Uh, that's showering, that's everything. It does not come off. Do not use duct tape or stuff like that for blisters. If you have KT tape, that's, that's the best. Um, KT tape can work good on a sore, sore knee. There's a bunch of different videos on how to tape your knees and that kind of thing. Uh, and it works for plantar fascia. So again, the way I do it is I just run it up like that. And, and I'll run two two different ones. So I put one, one band from here and I put one band a little bit further up, about an inch further up, and then they both kind of come back to here. There are some folks that show to put one solid band from here uh, along the bottom, uh, but as you can see that's a little short. Um, you can just play, play with them. KT tape is so versatile. Uh, you can probably patch your backpack with them. I, I mean it does everything. It breathes well. I've never had any problems with it irritating my skin or that kind of thing. Uh, fantastic stuff. 
So some things to consider when you're out on the trail and your foot starts to hurt or anything starts to hurt below your waist um, is change up some stuff. Uh, one, you can change your pace. So instead of walking the same pace, you maybe slow it up or speed up the pace a little bit. Two is change your, your stride length. So if you've been walking longer strides, go with shorter strides. Number three is change how you land on your foot. Most people have a heel strike. Try to land on the middle of your foot so that you kind of go like you, you land right here. Or try to land on the ball of your foot. If you have, have shoes that have a high lift, that's going to be kind of hard to do. But, um, so, but change where you feel like you're making contact with the earth. Uh, um, and if you land on the ball of your foot all the time, then go back to land back, back here. So you're going to change up something. Uh, the next is to change your shoes. Um, a lot of people hike way too long on a pair of shoes trying to get that last mile out of them. And the shoes get really sloppy and then um, I've noticed it before when I wear a new pair of shoes, man, it's like night and day. Uh, so uh, probably shouldn't go more than 400 miles on a pair of uh, lightweight trail shoes. Um, and ultras are no exception on that. 400 miles is probably top. So, change your stride, change your pace, change where you land on your foot, uh, shift weight around, just don't keep walking on the same pain with the same uh, motion and think you're going to get better from it. Um, so whenever I'm out hiking and we take a break, I'll usually stretch. Uh, and that stretch usually uh, is I'll find a piece of rock and just put my foot on it and I'll put my weight down and let my weight drop so I can stretch this this part out again. When you hike a long ways, this can get really tight, and this can get really tight. Um, this part's tougher to stretch out in the field because you got to be basically uh, kneeling in the dirt. Uh, this part you can stretch pretty quickly just by finding a, a piece that's higher and let your weight drop down on that to, to, to stretch this whole part out. So one of the things I do is I never get out of bed without doing uh, preparing my feet for walking. Uh, so that involves ma mainly stretching and rolling. So the first thing I'll do when I, as I'm lying in bed um, uh, is maybe tuck my feet under the blankets. You know how blankets can get kind of tight. And if you put your feet, you can kind of compress the toes down. I'll also let my toes come up a little bit and stretch my toes out that uh, way if I don't have any plantar fascia pain. Again, if you have plantar fascia, active pain you want to go real slow on that hole on this kind of stretching where you're, where, you're, where you're going to do this part. It's okay to stretch this and this but be gentle up in here. I don't think it gets you anywhere. I think it just uh, will make the pain worse if you get too heavy on that stretching. Um, so what I'll do is I'll tuck my feet under the blankets hard or bring them back so my toes flex back. Um, so as I get up I'll work one, one uh, foot at a time, and I'll just kind of start to stretch my feet. I might rub the bottom of my feet just to kind of get it ready for walking. You just don't jump out of bed and go boom and start walking. You know, that's a really hard, <laughs> hard hit for that plantar fascia, probably on a good day. So I'll stretch my feet one uh, way, and then I'll kind of push it this way while I'm pulling back this way. So I'm getting it stretched. And then I might do this where I push this way and pull back this way. I might rub a little bit. I might rub, kind of massage my, uh, my uh, Achilles tendon a little, little bit. And then I'll repeat that on the other, other side. We're just kind of stretching it, trying to feel that pull right in here. Trying, to, trying to, to stretch it this way and feel that pull right in here. And just kind of you know, massage it and get things warm, get some blood going down in uh, there. And then before I put my feet down on the floor, I've got another ball or a rubs roller. I'll leave a link to that below too, uh, which you can kind of just massage your feet. You're trying to just get them just flexible and warm and all ready to walk. Again, just don't plop your feet down and, and bear all your weight all at once. That's kind of tough on the plantar fascia. So as you can see, there's no magic bullet. Uh, for plantar fasciitis. I think all the, the links I have below and the videos that I've uh, uh, given you will give you the most amount of benefit and those are from people who are experts. 
and, and uh, maybe that stuff will help you some. So again, flexible front of your leg, flexible back of your leg, flexible plantar fascia, the right shoes, uh, strong feet. Uh, so that's my uh, <laughs> complicated <laughs> explanation of plantar fasciitis and what I do. Uh, I don't try to recommend it to anybody else. You can do whatever you want. I, I, this is just what I do, and um, uh, it's worked for me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed making it, uh, and I'll catch you out on the trail. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.